the Fibber, McGee, and Molly Show. NBC and Paper Mate Pens bring you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. We'll join Fibber and Molly in just a moment. There's certainly not much time left for ordering a care package for Christmas delivery overseas. For your friends and relatives in Europe or Asia, you'll find the quickest, surest, and best buy for the holidays is in the form of care, food, and textile packages. The assortment of special gift holiday packages is large, ranging in price from $18.75 for turkey and trimmings, $12 for turkey alone, $10 for standard food, and $6.95 for the special holiday budget food parcel. If you have no personal ties abroad, your care food package may go to some humble overseas home whose children will have no Santa Claus but you. And you may send your package in the name of someone on your own Christmas list. Care will send a message of explanation and you will get an acknowledgement. Cost of care packages includes guaranteed delivery if you order now. All you have to do to send a care Christmas package is to slip an order and a check into an envelope and send it to the care office. Share your Christmas. Show your goodwill. Send your contribution now to Care New York. When Mr. McGee went downtown early this morning, it looked to Mrs. McGee like a fine day to get her house cleaning done. So she moved the furniture in the middle of the room, got out all her cleaning equipment, and look who's back home at 9 a.m. Oh, no. Back already, McGee? Yep. I got to thinking about you doing all this house cleaning, Tootsie, and I thought I ought to do something about it. So you came trotting home to keep me company. Well, aren't you sweet? Sit over there, will you? I want to vacuum this chair. Sure. You see... Plug in the vacuum, will you? Sure. I hate to see you doing all this house cleaning by yourself, Molly. I can manage. Move your feet. Every year you go through all this Christmas house cleaning, and you shouldn't do it by yourself all alone. It gets done faster that way. Well, you ought to have help. Somebody to do the heavy work for you. All right, you talk me into it. Good. The mop and pail are on the back porch. You can mop the kitchen linoleum and then... Oh, hey, I, I wasn't talking about me. You weren't? Well, I don't see anybody else here. Well, she's not here. She's outside. Who's outside? The cleaning woman I went down and hired this morning at the employment agency. I told her to wait outside till I break the news to you. You mean to say the woman has been waiting on the front porch all this time while you followed me around with your little sales pitch? Well, I wasn't sure. You always say it's quicker to do it yourself, and hired help don't do it right and all that. Get her in here. She's already working, kiddo. I gave her a rag and some metal polish while she was waiting, and she's been polishing the doorbell button. Oh, well, that's a good start. Bring her in. She's a good worker, Molly. You'll be glad. Mrs. Bates. How'd she take it, Mr. McGee? Does she want me? Oh, sure. She's tickled to death. Come on in. Oh, well, I'm not through with the bell button yet, Mr. McGee. It was... Pretty tarnished. Fifteen minutes you've been polishing it. I guess I'm just one of them what they call perfectionists. I like it to be right. You know. McGee, bring her in. I guess I can finish it later. Yeah, yeah. This is my wife, Mrs. McGee. Molly, this is Mrs. Bates. How do you do, I'm sure. Oh, I'm just fine, thank you. Had a touch of the sciatica last week, but it's all gone now. Well, I'm glad to hear you're better. Mm, Comes and goes, (laughs) you know. Yeah, well... It was awful bad for a while. Had it right here in my hip, right there. Feel better now, though. I hope so. Uh, well, you can hang your hat and coat out in the kitchen, Mrs. Bates. Right through here. Oh, I like to work for a person that's very interested in me. A person tells me, you know. You see, Molly? She's only been here five minutes, and she likes it already. Yes, isn't that nice? I'm going to feel a lot better down there at the Elks Club this afternoon, knowing that you ain't working your little head off. It's a nice thought. Well, I hope I'll she... get a lot of pleasure out of knowing that my little wife is sitting on a cushion reading a movie magazine and sipping tea. While the hired help is cleaning the house without you lifting your little pinky. You betcha. You know, you should be an artist, dearie. You paint such beautiful pictures. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later, kiddo. Well, I wish you'd given me time to get the work organized instead of surprising me like this. But it is a nice idea. Well, I'm all ready to start to work, Mrs. McGee. I don't want you to lift a finger now. That's what I'm here for. Where do we start? Well, I was going to finish vacuuming this room first. That the van and the two chairs have to be moved. Oh, well, I'll do it. I have to kind of slide them, I guess. Can't do any real heavy lifting since my sciatica, you know. It's sort of... Oh, don't you move now. You just sit down there. I'll answer your telephone for you. Hello? Uh, McGee's house. Oh, just a minute. Who is it? Harold. Harold? Harold who? Harold Wurzfelder, my boyfriend. Oh, him. I hope you don't mind. I left your phone number with my mother in case of emergency, you know. Yes, well, if it's an emergency, go ahead. 
Uh, hello, Harold. Yeah, I'm working. McGee, their name is. Oh, fine. Had a touch of the sciatica last week, but otherwise I'm fit as a fiddle, as they say. <laughs> you know. What's new with you, Harold? Oh, good. Uh, say, Mrs. Bates, I hate to interrupt, but if we're going to get this rug vacuumed... Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. McGee. Hold on, Harold. Uh, Mrs. McGee wants to vacuum the rug. I'm going to take the phone in the other room. Now, how's everything work? You got a new job. Mm, well, one of us has to get started, so it looks like it's... Don't you hate to give someone a Christmas present and then find out six months later that they've never used it at all? Yeah, like that beautiful necktie I gave Doc Gamble last year that he claimed the red and green polka dots clashed with the purple and orange background. <laughs> or the book we gave Aunt Sarah that she'd already read. Yeah. You know that can't happen to you when you give a beautiful, useful paper mate pen. There's a gift that everyone can use that everyone loves to get. And why not? The famous paper mate pen, the pen that carries the approval of bankers and educators and millions of users, is the perfect way to say Merry Christmas. It's so easy to shop for. No worrying about sizes or styles or whether the person you're giving it to will like it or not. When you give a paper mate, you know it's a hit. Yep. Santas who rate give paper mate. You can buy them everywhere for only $1.69 with a free gift box. And Paper Mate comes in your choice of seven beautiful color combinations. So give the gift you know is right. This Christmas, give Paper Mate pens. There. That takes care of the furniture. Tables are all waxed and the Venetian blinds are all clean. I better get some more clean rags. Dropped a hot rivet down the foreman's collar. Oh, not again. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. McGee. Mind your way. Hang on, Harold. Don't let me disturb you, Mrs. Bates. I just wanted to get some clean cloths out of that cupboard. I'd better hang up, Harold. We ought to get the housework started. Don't be hasty now. I've already started. Uh, hang on, Harold. Did you start without me, Mrs. McGee? You shouldn't. Just the Venetian blinds, the woodwork, and the tabletops. That's all so far. You did all that in five minutes. Better wind your watch. It's noon, 12 o'clock. Oh, goodness, have I been on this phone for an hour and a half? Hello, Harold. I'm going to have to hang up. What do you mean, what's the rush? I got a job now. I can't sit around and talk to you all day. Call me tonight. Yeah, bye. I hope you weren't too hasty there. Might hurt his feelings, you know. Oh, Harold understands. When I'm on the job, I don't let anything interfere with my work. Business before pleasure, I always say. Yes. Well, there's plenty of work to do, so... I know, but don't you worry about that. That's my worry. Now, let's see. So far, according to what you said, we've got the woodwork and Venetian blinds done and the tables waxed, right? Right. Um, well, we're moving along. Uh, what do you want me to do next? Next? Oh, well, next I think we ought to clean out the refrigerator. It's 12 o'clock, you know. You're right. I'm starved, too. If I don't eat lunch, I just get so weak I can hardly stand. Now, you make the call. <laughs> Irving. He was worse than Chester, Francois, and George put together. You certainly have had an exciting life, Mrs. Bates, and a long one. <sighs> It's a wonder I've lasted this long with some of the men I've gone with. Oh, that Irving was just a rat, you know. Mm -hmm. You never knew what he was going to do next. Once he said to me, Florence, if I walk out that door, I'm never coming back. I said, who are you trying to scare? Go ahead, Irving. So he grabs his hat and walks out a half an hour later. Guess what? What? He was on a plane for China. I never saw him again. Irving sure was a squirrel, <laughs> you know. Kind of a flying squirrel, evidently. Look, if you'll just hand me those plates... Oh, I'll do the dishes. I don't want you to lift a little finger. Are you sure you don't mind? Well, of course not. What am I here for? A good question. Well, I'd better get this floor mop. Well, now, I'll do that. Then I'll do the upstairs room. Now, I'll do that, too. That's what I'm being paid for to work. You just sit down and read a magazine. You've done enough today. Oh, if that's for me, I don't want to talk to anyone. I've got work to do, business before pleasure. Just tell them I'm busy, <laughs> you know. Hello? 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Irving? Yes. Yes, Mrs. Bates is here, but she's too busy to... Irving? Really? Well, imagine he's back. I hope you don't mind, Mrs. McGee. Here you are. Irving before business, I always say. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll only be a minute. Hello, Irving. 
Yeah. How was China? You can't really, can you? Well, go ahead, say something in Chinese. Heavenly days. Oh, imagine picking up Chinese in less than a year. Oh, Irving, we're just saying that. Oh. <laughs> Her name was Bates, Mrs. Bates. Just be on the lookout for a short, thin woman with a romantic background. No, she spent the whole day on the phone. I had to do everything myself. I'm bushed. Yes, I'm surprised. Uh-oh, here comes Mr. Do-Good now. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, kiddo, I'm home. Dearie, I want to talk to you. Where's Mrs. Bates? She left early. Irving's in town. Who? Ah, oh, that'd take too long to explain. It doesn't matter. The work is all done. But next time you get a bright idea... All done, huh? And left early, too. Fast worker, huh? Boy, look at this room sparkle. Cost me ten bucks, but it was worth it for you to rest. McGee, for your information... Not that you don't do a swell job too, kiddo, but when you hire a professional housekeeper, you can tell a difference just like that. Just look at that woodwork shine. Look at them Venetian blinds. Look at that wax job. For your information... Now that the place is finished and you've had a good rest, let's go out dancing tonight. What do you say? The Ritz Vista. The sump room. We'll go to the sump room. Molly, what's the matter? Molly, open that door. Fibber and Molly will be right back. Your radio dial is the key to a veritable mecca of entertainment when you set it here to your NBC station. Tuesday night, for example, you'll hear the tops in mystery and excitement as NBC presents three top flight adventure shows. There's Dragnet, the true stories of your police force in action. Rocky Fortune, starring Frank Sinatra, and Barry Craig, confidential investigator, with William Gargan in the title role. You'll hear the best in true-life police stories when you tune to Dragnet, starring Jack Webb in the role of Sergeant Joe Friday. Dragnet takes you step-by-step on the side of the law in the reenactment of an actual police case. From crime to punishment, Dragnet is true. From beginning to end, Dragnet is exciting listening. Here at Tuesday nights on most NBC stations. And listen as Frank Sinatra portrays the footloose and fancy-free Rocky Fortune, an adventurous young man always in the midst of an intriguing situation. Tuesday is terrific when you listen to the fine shows on the NBC radio network. Be sure to hear them all. Hmm, that's odd. I completely forgot it. What'd you forget? The joke we were supposed to close with here. Oh, well, you'll have another chance tomorrow night. After all, this is only Monday. Yeah. Good night. Good night, all. NBC and Paper Make Pens have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed with Natalie Masters as Mrs. Bates. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. Get Mom a Kitchen Radio for those daytime shows on the NBC radio network.